Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel ML for Analytics. Today we will be performing web scraping using Power BI. We will be building a stock scraper using Power BI in this video. So for that, uh, what I'll do is I'll go to yahoo.com and in search I'll type MSFT the one representing the, the ticker representing Microsoft Corporation and I'll click on historical data as in if you like type Yahoo Finance on Google and if you click on it and if you here type the ticker for Microsoft Corporation it will take you there go to historical data obtain URL corresponding to that and go to Power BI, click on get data. So let the dialog, dialog box get open, go to web, click on connect. Paste the copied URL over here, slash, then click on OK. We'll have to wait since it's connecting to the base URL. Establishing a connection. Now, uh, the navigator is going to produce some set of tables to me. This is the document table. Uh, I don't have to go to that. This is table zero. Well, I don't want this table actually. I also don't want this table. So, as you can see, the data that I am looking for is this data and it's in table 2. Click on table 2 as in select table 2. Click on transform data. It will take you to your Power Query editor. In Power Query editor, now rename this. Uh, perhaps rename this to maybe stock scraper or whatever you say, stock table. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'll go to advanced editor, and as you can see, that uh, this is actually written in M language, and what I'll do is, I'm actually going to actually uh, type it like, ticker, as text. I'm basically going to convert this into a function as a table. So click on equal to and click on this arrow. So what this particular piece of text will do is it will convert this import into a function. And the parameter of this function is ticker. Now what I'm going to make is I'm going to make this URL as dynamic. So what I'll do is I will actually do some appending over here. I will choose this. Uh, since this chunk of URL, it will be static in nature. So I don't have any concern regarding that. I'll add ampersand over here. And then I'm actually going to add ticker over here. Then again add. Then this. I'll have to again close it. And I'll do the same over here. Again paste ampersand over here. Again we'll uh, write the name of parameter as in ticker over here and then again ampersand. So now uh, what I'll do is this is a function and whatever ticker I'm going to give over here the same ticker will be passed over here and the URL will be modified for that ticker. So in that way I have made this URL as dynamic in nature. So I will click on done and as you can see this is a table now and uh, this is a function now and I have to pass any parameter over here if I pass MSFT over here and I 
click on invoke and it's going to produce me the table corresponding to that share i'll delete it for the time being i'll go again to struct table but actually this name doesn't look good to me so i'll again change it to stock scraper and what i'll do is i'll actually create a new table i'll uh, name the column as ticker only and i'll enter some set of my favorite tickers over here um apple pg and uh, what else you can say uh it's actually aapl sorry it's actually aapl and i'll see what's what's that for amazon actually for amazon it's amcn amcn after this it's G double O G for Google or Alphabet, and I name it as Struck Scraping or uh, Struck Data. Actually, I'll click on OK. This will actually fit the selected tickers for me. And what I'll do is in this particular table only, I'll add a column. I'll click on invoke custom function and i have to obviously name it name this column so i'll write it as struct data and it will actually now ask me to provide it a function query so i have uh, only one in my case so it's stock scraper and on what column should i apply this function so it's obviously ticker then i'll click on ok it's going to ask me this information is required about data privacy just click on continue uh, ignore it click on save so now as you can see uh this has returned uh, a new column to me and uh, in all these uh, rows, we are having a table corresponding to each ticker. So this is basically a table, which was uh, the table two, which was fetched from Yahoo Finance site. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this column. I'm going to click on this expand button over here. And as you can see, it's going to, it's asking me to select uh, the columns which I want in this table or uh, so for now I want all of these columns and I just want to deselect this as in use original column name as prefix I don't want that and I'm just going to click OK and as you can see that uh, every ticker has been has now multiple rows corresponding to your data it has and uh, so now what i can do is i can actually make multiple graphs and all those things using this data over here so uh if i go uh, over here and i click on close and apply then basically it's going to fetch uh, all these rules for me uh, so the refresh time is going to be long um, since it's like uh, many rows are there and uh, it's actually going to load all those rows for you. So uh, if you just want to limit it, you can limit it. If not, you, you will get the data loaded. Uh, the data has been loaded in my case. I'm going to expand them. And what I am interested in is that I want to tickle as a filter so i'll select this as a filter and i will uh, reduce its size a bit and yeah it's, it's fine for me and what i'm going to do is i go over here and i select 
this uh, show select all option over here i'll just expand it if you want you can go over here and you can change it to a drop down i like filters and drop down so i'll keep it like that and after this what I'm, i really want to see is i actually want to uh, see a line chart for this so i'm going to select a line chart and yeah i'll increase its size a bit and yeah it's, it's fine for me and i'll bring it just in close to values as you can see it's like that uh five so something has happened i think so in this case the date is actually a text i don't want it as a text so i'll try changing it to date over here it's going to ask for this i'll click on yes yeah, I changed this to date and now I can go over here and what I'll do is I'll again paste date over here and as you can see now it has actually uh, switched on time intelligence. I'll bring it to the, to the center perhaps and what I'm going to do now is that uh, I have multiple options over here. I am going to click on this expand all down one level in the hierarchy. So if I go over here, you can see that date has got multiple hierarchies over here. Year, quarter, month, day, all these hierarchy, they are in a hierarchy. So I'm uh, what I can do in this case, currently uh, it's set to the highest hierarchy. I can drill down. And now I'm in. I am at the next level in the hierarchy, and that is I am on quarter level, and I can see the count of it. Well, I don't want count actually. I really want to see the sum, and I I just think that even existing clause is in text C. I don't want that, so I'll actually change it to decimal number. I'll click on yes. Okay, it's saying that we cannot automatically convert the column to decimal number type. Well, this happens because there was some value in this row which can't be converted to a number. So for that, you have to go over here and particularly what Yahoo does is that it actually places a dash or as you can see this dividend field is over here and that is why actually it's it's giving me this i'm going to exclude it for this time and i'm going to click on ok and again i'm going to now i'll change it from any to a decimal number in the first place itself and i'll go I'll actually have to do this for every column over here. Right now, I'm not going to do this, do this since I'm interested in it just in close for the time being. I'll click on close and apply. It will again load the data after applying query changes. It takes a while. So after that, now you can see that everything has been converted to a number. Well, um, in Power BI, all the rows which have text data type are actually left aligned, and the numbers they are right aligned. So that is one point of identification in this case. And now I can see I can change it to sum if I want. And see now it has got changed to some. I'll again go to one level hierarchy. So yearly it's actually the same, except that uh, it's now a sum. Now I'll go one level down in the hierarchy. It's actually that the data is available for three quarters, perhaps quarter four 2019, quarter one 2020, and quarter two 2020. I'll again go up and level down and it's going to give me the month-wise figures. 
corresponding to adjacent rows. See how easy it is. Even, and if I go down one more level, so then I'm going to see the daily figures over here. Uh, but yeah, it's all all the stocks uh, right now. If I want to see it uh, as in legend, I'll have to actually play sticker in legend and I'll have uh, one color assigned to each of the ticker. And as you can see, we're currently P and PG is actually having the lowest adjacent, uh, adjusted close figure. I will choose one uh, ticker at a time. And as you can see, it's uh, Apple. This, this graph is for Apple. Uh, the other graph for Amazon, the third one for Google, the fourth one for Microsoft, then it's PG. So uh, now you can see that we have displayed this in the form of a graph. So you can do it for any other data uh, set. You can do it for e-commerce sites if you want. And you can see the product reviews. You can see uh, the data for prices corresponding to a product. Uh, you can do web scrapping if you have time crunch. I know I, we can do it using different languages. But we have this facility available in Power BI also. And that's why that's what makes it a wonderful tool. So with this, I would like to conclude this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit on like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. So thank you and stay tuned. Bye-bye.